The process of gold plating is very complex, but can be explained very simply. The ions in our gold solution have a positive charge, whereas the metallic surface is given a negative charge. Once the object being plated is exposed to the solution, the ions begin interacting. The positively charged ions from the solution are attracted to the negatively charged surface of the object. They will therefore bond to the surface, creating a fine, beautiful layer of pure gold on the surface of your object. How does electroplating work? Electroplating is very similar to electrolysis, using electricity to split up a chemical solution, which is the reverse of the process by which batteries produce electric currents. All these things are examples of electrochemistry, chemical reactions caused by or producing electricity that give scientifically or industrially useful end products. The idea is to use electricity to coat a relatively mundane metal, such as copper, with the thin layer of another, more precious metal, such as gold or silver. Electroplating involves passing an electric current through a solution called an electrolyte. This is done by dipping two terminals called electrodes into the electrolyte and connecting them into a circuit with a battery or other power supply. The electrodes and electrolyte are made from carefully chosen elements or compounds. When the electricity flows through the circuit they make, the electrolyte splits up and some of the metal atoms it contains are deposited in a thin layer on top of one of the electrodes. It becomes electroplated. All kinds of metals can be plated in this way, including gold, silver, tin, zinc, copper, cadmium, chromium, nickel, platinum, and lead. First, you have to choose the right electrodes and electrolyte by figuring out the chemical reaction or reactions you want to happen when the electric current is switched on. The metal atoms that plate your object come from out of the electrolyte, so if you want to copper plate something you need an electrolyte made from a solution of a copper salt, while for gold plating you need a gold based electrolyte, and so on. Next. You have to ensure the electrode you want to plate is completely clean. Otherwise, when metal atoms from the electrolytes are deposited onto it, they won't form a good bond and they may simply rub off again. Now we're ready for the main part of electroplating. We need two electrodes made from different conducting materials, an electrolyte, and an electricity supply. Generally, one of the electrodes is made from the metal we're trying to plate and the electrolyte is a solution of a salt of the same metal. So, for example, if we're copper plating some brass, we need a copper electrode, a brass electrode, and a solution of a copper-based compound such as copper sulfate solution. Metals such as gold and silver don't easily dissolve so have to be made into solutions using strong and dangerously unpleasant cyanide-based chemicals. The electrode that will be plated is generally made from a cheaper metal or a non-metal coated with the conducting material such as graphite. Either way, it has to conduct electricity or no electric current will flow and no plating will occur. We dip the two electrodes into the solution and connect them up into a circuit so the copper becomes the positive electrode, or anode, and the zinc becomes the negative electrode, or cathode. When we switch on the power, the copper sulfate solution splits into ions, atoms with too few or too many electrons. Copper ions, which are positively charged, are attracted to the negatively charged brass electrodes.